These darts are loaded with an opioid more than a thousand times stronger than morphine, but that's still just barely enough to take down a full-grown giraffe. The giraffe leads rangers and researchers on a wild chase. So we have to like run through acacia bushes, or if you're me, you trip over acacia bushes. So then we'll have a capture team come out and kind of assist the giraffe to the ground with rope. And then we jump on the head and neck immediately. It is quite a rough thing to watch. But giraffes are really tough. Males often use their own heavy necks to bludgeon their rivals. Once the giraffe is down, a reversal drug is injected, and the team tries to keep the animal calm. We put a blindfold over their eyes, um, and then we also put some earplugs. There's a rush to take measurements and samples, and then the most important part, attaching a GPS tracking device. <laughs> Though you might not have heard much about it, some giraffes are in danger of dying out, and these humans are desperate to save them. Giraffes are somehow both absurd and beautiful. And for centuries, humans all over the world have tried to capture their likeness with mixed success. Europeans called them camel leopards and snuck them into grand paintings. Some of the artists clearly weren't too familiar with their subjects. While drawings of giraffes have slowly improved, our understanding has remained pretty sketchy. A lot of things that we know about other animals, we have no idea on giraffe. Like how much space they need, where they go, how far they roam. Do herds stay together? Do they drift apart? Do they care about which individuals they're hanging out with? Do they have friends? Here's a few things we do know. Giraffes come in several different flavors, each with a distinct range and coat pattern. And they have complicated genetic relationships that scientists have just recently started to unravel in an effort to sort them into distinct species. Of the four possible giraffe species, one of them, the southern giraffe, is actually doing really well. Um, the other three are in much worse shape. And the total giraffe population has fallen 30% in the last few decades, all without most humans noticing. Giraffes are all over the place in popular culture. And I think because of that, we forget that actually they're endangered. This is Sophie the Giraffe. In one year, in one country, France, over 800,000 of these toys were sold, nearly eight times the number of living, breathing giraffes on Earth. So why are giraffes in trouble? Unlike elephants and rhinos, they don't have tusks or horns that are valuable to poachers. People do kill giraffes largely for their meat, but poaching isn't the only problem that giraffes face and may not even be the biggest one. They are facing a shrinking of their habitat, a fragmentation of their world. Hundreds of years ago, giraffes could be found across this wide swath of Africa. But humans and their cattle started to compete with giraffes for land, and that vast range shriveled up. Planned development corridors are set to cross these patches, dividing them further. And climate change is making rainy seasons shorter and droughts more frequent. You can imagine life for a giraffe in this dry new world. Searching for patches of green, it finds its familiar routes cut off by fences, roads, and herds of cattle. Hunger and stress make it hard for giraffes to complete their 15-month pregnancies and make them more vulnerable to predators. Governments have set aside land to protect vulnerable species, but often that's not enough. You can't just fence them away in national parks. You can, but there's not enough room. In Kenya, the vast majority of giraffes live outside national parks and protected areas. To really protect giraffes, we need to ensure that they can survive and coexist with people and with livestock. Some local communities are managing their own lands as conservancies that help fill in the gaps. And these communities that have set up conservancies see benefits in terms of ecotourism, in terms of support from the government. Uh, they see the animals as valuable entities rather than just as sources of meat or nuisances to be chased away. To figure out the best places to protect, scientists need to keep track of where giraffes go. At first, they tried using giant collars, like the ones they use for elephants. 
the giraffes would just lean over and slip the collars off. The obvious answer is just to use these two ossicones that are on top of their heads. They have no nerves or blood vessels in them, so you can very easily attach a collar onto those. Over 150 giraffes across Africa have been tackled, tagged, and set free. It's my favorite part every time, to see them up and running and they're completely fine. Um, and they have this new GPS unit, which is really fashionable for them, <laughs> um, and it'll give us lots of data. Scientists can now see exactly where giraffes travel, and they hope that will help them save this charismatic species from extinction. Giraffes are beloved, and if we can lose a creature like that without people noticing, how much else are we losing from the world? Giraffes are a reminder that we need to care. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of these videos. And if you want to specifically see more of me talking about animals, check out the earlier episode on New Zealand's rat problem.